Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me and see my screen? I need to go through this as I still just kind of get used to this Discord. Uh, if you can, just uh, type yes in the questions there for advanced webinar. Uh, hashtag advanced dash webinar. Just make sure that uh, every, we're all good to go. Okay, thank you, uh, David Tarantino. Uh, and... Uh, Let's uh, let's get going. So uh, Scott, are are you? Uh, I think you're in here. Ready to go? Uh, I, I'm sorry. Let me uh, let me go through the uh, disclosures, etc., and then we'll uh, we'll jump in here with Scott. Um, all right. So um, uh, anyway, welcome to the the advanced webinar. This is the uh, live education you get here with uh, uh, your Global Plus subscription. Uh, we've been doing it for free in here for like since the you know the holidays basically and just uh uh getting up and running here uh and um uh you know uh, growing our discord and uh, and seeing what we want to do uh here in discord uh, anyway uh today we have scott uh pulsini futures trader we have him every thursday at 10 a.m east coast time uh he will be going through some live trading uh it is uh uh, your insight to um, a specific trader, a professional trader, and how they uh, analyze the markets, their setups, uh, their ways of trading, uh, as well as uh, trade management uh, and uh, kind of outlook or trader psychology on the markets. You guys know who Scott is. Uh, and then you have Scott's contact information here. I'll be putting this into the chat so you guys have it. Uh, if you want to uh, reach out to him, he does offer mentorship services. Uh, you've got a website, his email, his Twitter. He's got a trading room that he has on Discord as well. And he's got an educational course. Uh, he also offers a trade copier service, uh, but you'll reach out to him for more on that. Uh, I got to go through the disclosures and then we'll turn it over to Scott. Uh, just make sure you understand uh, what you're getting involved in with here. This is not a trade copier room. Uh, it is uh, all about learning from another trader and their uh, approach to the markets so that it, you, maybe you find something that uh, resonates with you that you want to integrate within your trading. That's what it's for. Uh, learn from the uh, uh, professional traders here. Uh, anyway, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accu accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, Scott, uh, take it away. Start, start, uh, hit the screen button uh, and um, uh, let's uh, get this show started. Maybe you hear me? Yes. Yeah. How, are, how are you? I'm good. <clears throat> okay. One second here. I'm trying to. Looks right. Okay. Let's. Uh... screen yes Alrighty. Um, <clears throat> currently long Nasdaq here um, I just trailed my stop so we had some uh, I don't know I need to mute this thing hold on a second you're uh, kind. Of, you're kind of voice is kind of soft, uh, Scott. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. I need to mute this because you're going to hear every time someone comes in the room, and that's not going to be. Cool. Okay. Hold on a second. So where do I do? I just right click advanced webinar. I'm not seeing a mute option. Mm, let's see. Voice channels. Let's try this. 
Sorry, could you still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I muted everything. Um, oh, I, I'm right. sorry, Scott. Yeah, so if I, I, I need to interrupt you just beforehand. Um, the, we right. get a lot of traders in here for these webinars. Um, uh, Discord can only um, show uh, 50 uh, streaming, 50, can only handle 50 uh, people attending one stream at a time. So I am restreaming. Um, if uh, you don't get access to it, then come back in and um, uh, join my stream there. Uh, the voice channel will be open, so you'll hear Scott. You'll just be accessing my rebroadcasting of his of his screen. That's all, Scott. Okay. All right. So I'm currently long here. Um, you can see this black zone. We had some cell ice come in. Um, some more all in this zone here, this black zone, and then this blue zone. It's, we had some buy ice just come in here, almost 200, and then another 97. So I got long off of this um, sell ice black zone, and I was I got in aggressively. So my my usual let me, where is my little drawer, dude? Let's see. All right, so my normal, you know, the way I usually trade these zones, uh, it's the conservative route where I wait for a full ATR or retest fail and I get in three quarters of an ATR. This one I got in three quarters of an ATR aggressive entry um, because of the my Ludwig thesis analysis. So you can see here Ludwig levels. <coughs> I've really started to use these um, more for like a thesis based thing these are incredible for date they're incredible overall but they're really good for day trading um and you know you, you're it, it's it's an art but you know you're judging based on what should happen what shouldn't happen and you'll see as we go through these um you know how i'm coming up with my thesis for what's going on here but um currently we had these levels here so again reserve, the, the red is um the red is uh, resistance, the blue is support, the yellow is directional, so um, is the directional line. So we built new lugs here, you can see here, and we held prior red and the yellow directional. So anything above the yellow, you're expecting it to get to the red, right? So that's my target right now on this position I have. And any, any setups I get in book map, I will enter aggressively to the long side if we're above the yellow. If we're below the yellow, then I will I'll enter aggressively on the short side. I will still take shorts in this area if we get a setup and it, it's a, a bearish setup, but I need then that's when I will need to see a full ATR move away, a retest, a fail, then I'll go short. So I'll, I'll trade both ways, but I'm more conservative with my entry if we're above, you know, on shorts if we're above the yellow, and I'm more conservative with my entries on longs if we're below the yellow. The, the so the whole idea here and again i put in i could put it in again if you guys don't have it i put it in last week i, I gotta do a scroll up but if there's enough guys that don't have it i can put it in again if you watch that ludwig level um meeting i had with pamela ludwig she talks about um you know what should happen what shouldn't happen so when you get above the directional this should get to the red if i see a negative volume event that's telling me something's wrong Right, you shouldn't see a negative. Uh, I shouldn't say negative. A, a bearish volume event. You shouldn't see that. And if that happens, then you got to change your change your two. Seven hundred conference. So I'll come back to here in a second. I want to see what's going on there. There's a lot of ice flowing in this area in ES. So you can see here um, <clears throat> a little bit ago we had almost a thousand icebergs. That's this black zone, and then this just came in again. That was that, and then you had this come in even more. Another 1300. I actually got to adjust the bottom of this. I'm going to incorporate both of those. ES is trying to rain on my NASDAQ party. NASDAQ keeps trying to rally, and then the sell ice keeps coming in. And this, uh, see, here's some more sell ice, another 17 or another 700. So you got almost 3,000, over 3,000 sell ice in this zone right here. So how am I going to trade this if it, depending on what happens here? Right, so where are we? Well, same type of look. Prior lugs, we built new lugs. We held prior or the yellow and the prior red. That's bullish. 
and the expectation is to get to these targets here, right? 87, 80, and 87. This is a baby lug, we call them, and then the, the main lug. So now you see a volume event coming in right here. So this should not turn into a negative volume event. It should hold, and then we should get up here. If this turns out and it breaks a full ATR below here and retest, then I will go short because you should, I'm basically changing my tune because this should get up here. So when you watch that webinar, she talks about what should happen, right? So we should go up and tag this red. If that does not happen and I get a negative, uh, I keep saying negative, a bearish volume event, that's telling me something's wrong and I'm expecting it to at least come back directional and maybe all the way back down to the blue. So here, here's it. PI size for <clears throat> 700 contracts. Some bias coming in too. It's basically all in the same zone. So whatever way we break out of the zone, you're going to see the major move. So we'll be watching that. Um, so you can see here. You can go back through these Ludwig levels and, and and any market and just watch the, these same scenarios unfold every single time. Right. So here, here's a perfect example of. This was yesterday. We actually caught the short uh, in the morning, and we caught it. I put, actually posted that YouTube video in the room. You can watch it. We caught the short in the morning, and then I caught the short in the afternoon as well when we moved down here. But the reason I was looking short in the afternoon is came down here, built new lugs. Here's the yellow directional. Here's the blue. We tried to rally up. We, we couldn't tag the red, obviously, and then we get back below the yellow. I had a volume event. Um, I believe it was a stop and hold. I got short, and the... the the um, objective was the blue lug and we went straight down there so that's my thinking here so this should hold and come up here if that doesn't that's the negative <laughs> the bearish volume event and i will play it the same way like i played it here um if i do get short this will be i'll be watching this closely to take off a couple this 48 and if we happen to rip through there then this is my next goal otherwise if this can hold i'm going to go along this this area this setup and I'm going to go along aggressively out of here, right? Because we're still above the yellow. Here's your volume event. So if this gets a three quarters of an ATR out of here, I will take along. So ATR is 6.76. <coughs> My little handy dandy calculator. 6.76 times 0.75 is 5.07. So five points out of here, I will take along. Top of the zone, 75.50, so 80.50, I will go long. If this gets up there, let's see what's going on with NQ. All right, it's still alive here. So what I did was I originally went long off of this aggressively, right? And I put my stop, three quarters of an ATR at the time. Uh, ATR is right now 28. So at the time it was, I, I think it was over 30. And this was my stop, and then I had a new event, right? And now I can trail my stop three quarters of an ATR below this new event. And this is how you can also add. So say we come up here and you get another event, you can trail your stop, you can add, you can trail your stop. So we had an instance like this yesterday. If you watch the webinar that I posted, um, sure, I was short a yes and I was long gold. S&P, I sized for yes, 721 contracts. Gold, gold, I had an opportunity to add, add, add. It's just very hard when I'm on the webinars because I was... You know, I'm watching these other markets and I'm pulling these. I have one screen, so I'm pulling the stuff back and forth. So the point is that could have been a month making day in gold yesterday. But watch the webinar and you'll see what I'm talking about. How I was there was a new setup and I trail my stop. New setup, trail my stop. And it should have been adding based on the lugs and everything else. But again, just watch the webinar and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, more ice coming in here. So this zone is going to be instrumental on the next move. So if we do that, we're going to rip. If we do that, bye-bye. So wait for that. Again, I will be conservative entry on a short side, aggressive entry on the long side. NASDAQ is flirting with a stop out to start the day because the ES keeps raining on my parade with sell ice. So we'll see if this can hold. If not, that's telling me something, right? So if this doesn't hold, and I get stopped out. I'm looking for the full ATR. Remember, this is at a three quarter. I'm looking at the full ATR, which is 28.83, so 29 points. If I get a retest fail, then I'm going to go short because you should not see a bearish event above the yellow lug if everything is kosher and it's supposed it does what it should do, right? Or what it's supposed to do, I should say. So again, we're above the yellow. You are expecting a tag of the red. If you see a negative, oh my God, how many times am I going to say negative? If you see a bearish event, 
something's up that's not right. And that means we're coming down here and possibly there. So that's how I play those. Um, something just fired off on wheat. Let's check this out in here. This was beans earlier. This is an important zone too. Actually, I'm gonna go probably go along this. Let's check out the lugs. Right, so I will be aggressive on a trade here. Actually, I missed the original entry. What happened here? Came up here, built new lugs. Here's your directional. Held, held, and now we're above. The objective is, first objective is red lug. It's only six points away, six cents away. But I'm going to enter this because this was an overnight trade, actually. This was a winner, or scratch, I can't remember. But something happened overnight, there was a big stop run. Um, so that is basically three quarters. I can guarantee you that's three quarters of an ATR. I should have already been in this. So this was the setup, right? All right, I'm stopped out of the in queue. This was the setup here. <clears throat> there was sell ice 200, buy ice 200, dueling icebergs in this zone. Doesn't matter what it is, it's there's committed traders in this area, right? So we had an ATR move away. I'm guaranteeing that's an ATR. Let's see. This was uh, 95, 25. We got all the way up to 97, three quarters. So that's two and a half cents. ATR is two cents. So that's definitely an ATR, more than an ATR. So I would have been, if I was watching this, I would have been in the first time we got three quarters of an ATR. So we retested, we failed. Now I'm in. So now my objective is the red lug right so my stop is going to go um so what did i say two so one and a half cents three quarters of, of the atr the atr is two so three quarters is one and a half cents so my stop is going to go f uh, one and a half cents below this zone what am i doing Bottom of the zone is 93.50, so my stop's going to go at 91 for this trade. So this is not the best trade per se because the red lug is many times resistance, right? So I'm basically risking six cents to make six cents, and that's not how I like to trade. I like to be getting multiples on my when I put on a trade. I like to say, okay, I'm risking one to make three, one to make five, right? So, um, but this thing's pretty bullish, so I'm okay with it. Um, so now what I'm going to do here in NASDAQ is I got stopped out, right? Now if this retests the zone and fails, I'm going short because this you should not have seen a bearish event. This is bearish. This was this ice right here. You can see the white snake. Bruce loves when I call them snakes. There's a black mamba. There's a white snake. These are just swipes, sweeps. It's the sweep indicator, but that was all part of the iceberg. Now here's your full ATR below. If I get a retest fail, I will get in at three quarters of an ATR. My stop's gonna go at three quarters of an ATR above there, and I'm gonna play for the yellow lug and then maybe the blue lug. Let's take a look at this real quick. So it means it's ripping. So actually, we'll come back here in a second. So I'm gonna show you, this is what I'm talking about. That was a good timing there. I'm glad I pulled this over. Um, so now here's a new event. Actually, this is, I'm getting out of two right here automatically. Um, hold on one second here. So I got out of two because we're at the, uh, we're at the red lug, right? I'm, I'm just, I usually get out of some, if it just, if it pauses at all, I'm out. Here you go. This was the objective, right? We got it immediately. Now it's kind of struggling here. And now we have a volume event. So if the volume event turns bearish, I'm going to turn around and flip and go short because I'm aggressive. I know it's above the yellow lug, but I'm aggressive at the main, the major lugs the other way, right? Because it's so many times I can show you 5,000 examples of how they're, you know, the resistance and support and they hold all the time. So this is this event right here. Let's change this. So I try to use yellow for stops. Yellow and white.
All right, so first of all, most importantly, stop wise, we said a point and a half, right? So now this is a new event. I can now move my stop a point and a half below here. So that would be 9875, 9675, 97. So that's a point, or no, I'm sorry, 97 quarter. That's a point and a half below this zone. So now I'm basically, this is a risk free trade, right? And this is what's important. We talk about this every single time. I'm not trailing this stop because I don't want to give back profit. You're, it, the market does not care about your profit and what your the market cares about events, volume events. That's where you trail your stop, not because you don't want to get back money. If you're trading like that because you don't want to get back money, you're not going to be. You're, you're just not going to make it overall. I'm telling you right now, you got to you got to place your stops where the market will respect it, not because you don't want to lose money. So this is based on this setup. And actually, what I'm going to do if this fails, I'm going to turn around and go short because we are getting a that would be a bearish volume event at a major lug Ludwig level and I will turn around and short it right this bust through here builds new lugs then I'll be looking for long more long opportunities <coughs> but again if this is going to hold and build new lugs you should this should not become a bearish event right if it does it's telling you something's up and you got to be ready to peel out and then I'm going to turn around and go short that working actually that's too many six all right let's see what's going on Back. did not retest this zone yet remember i will unless something new comes in i'm going to i'm waiting for a retest of this last event si event Retest, fail, I'm in at three quarters, and I'm playing down to the yellow and the blue lug. The only thing is, this is why I thought this was a good winner. I mean, a good trade. You can see above here, talk about this almost every webinar, too. What is this? Long-term liquidity, long-term. These will get filled, most likely today, right? Paper always gets their way. Doesn't mean it's a go straight there. You can bet that that's going to happen. So I'm almost hoping this doesn't turn into a... Here's your retest. I'm almost hoping I don't have to get short here. I mean, I'm not going to not put the trade on because the volume's up there or the liquidity's up there because it doesn't mean we're going to go there right now. We can go there this afternoon, right? So I'll still take um, I'll still take shorts knowing that's up there, but the ultimate goal, you can bet we're getting up there today. All right, so here's the retest um, of the zone. ATR is... 30.23, so we go 30.23 times 0.75 is 22.67. So I'll just say 23 points. So 23 points below this zone, I will take a short. The zone is at, again, I'm talking about the blue zone. 57 quarter, so we got 34 quarter is where I will go short. So if I get filled on that, then my stop is going to go three quarters of an ATR above this zone, which will be right in the liquidity. So that should be fun. I'm I'm I'm, I'm almost literally hoping I don't get filled on this trade because I I'd rather just be long on another long setup. But follow my rules. This is how you trade, right? You don't you, you got to get to a point where you're not subjective, right? You I have my setups, I have my rules, and this is how I trade them, right? And you know, even though it feels like even if you watch that webinar from yesterday with ES, I'm like, this doesn't feel, this feels like it's going to turn around and rip on me. It's feel, it doesn't matter what it feels, right? I still follow my rules. doesn't mean it's always comfortable, but that's where traders get in trouble because, you know, they, they like to say it's intuition, but I mean, I have intuition too, but I, I've been trading for 23 years or whatever. So it's like, yeah, I have intuition, but my feelings still aren't right all the time, right? So that's why you have to have something that's more mechanical and automatic right it doesn't mean like you know there's gonna be times where you can use your intuition if it's ripping up and it's struggling at some liquidity or something then you say okay i'm out of one or two that's fine but as far as the setups are concerned i'm not you know i know this liquidity is up there but i i have my setup and this if this turns around and sells off i'm going short again it doesn't mean we have to hit the liquidity right now so this may turn around and I'm, again i'm hoping i get a new bullish signal because i really want to go long because i know we're coming up to this stuff up here 
course it had to stop me out first. Did I get stopped out to the tick? No, that's good at least. No complaining there. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back to the ES. This is actually going to be the, the major on that. Uh, the crew number is coming out. Soybeans is ripping. There you go. Actually, now, let's see if we pulled new lugs. We did. I'm going to add to this trade. No new lugs yet. So, if you watch that webinar I posted before with her, this is a signal. Like, if this fails here and gets back below here, there's something wrong. Like, it didn't, it didn't have the power to generate the new lugs, then the short will be the play. But I'm hoping this builds new lugs, and I'm going to add to this trade, and we're going to rip. So you got to do this sometimes on Sierra chart because it's very manual labor. You have to do everything yourself. you got to refresh these. I'm just making sure new lugs aren't built yet. All right, let's take a look here. So the one issue with with taking the long on the ES here, I'll still do it, but you know, you get I'm basically gonna get long like right here, and you got baby lug here and this lug here, but that's fine. I'll still take it. But I'm just weary of those lugs so close to the to the trade. I'm actually gonna be getting in right at the baby lug. <clears throat> but there's enough volume in here. I'm fine with taking that chance that we're going to rip, build new lugs, and then just fly. So, you know, overall, we're still very bearish, and all we're doing here, so I still look at bigger picture stuff, right? But, you know, we're day traders. I'm a day trader, and a lot of times, so for instance, here's balance, right? First of all, there was major balance that we broke down from. This is all, you always want to have this in the back of your head, what's going on big picture, right? Because then that, those are the ways you're going to get the bigger, larger moves. The counter moves are usually more shallow and you know, not as big, and then the, the big moves are the in the direction of the trend is where you get your big moves, right? So, yeah, this balance, multi-week balance, fail breakout, right? Here's your high volume node. We retested it. It held like it should have if the market's going to remain bullish. It came up here and then started building balances and breaking down. You had a fail breakout here, kind of like on the bigger picture. Then you had this guy here, and we broke down yesterday, and all we're doing now is retesting, and this zone is actually right in the middle of this, is retesting the high volume node. So this is still bearish until it can clear this guy, and then we'll probably come back to some of these. But this is still, if this hold, like if this ice turns around and breaks, this is going to be a good trade. Right? So we're, this is still in a bearish state. So you just want to know that stuff. Obviously, it's very important. But, but we talked about this last week, right? Okay, that's great that I know this is bearish, but you know we're day traders. So if I want to get short here, you know, I basically would put it on here and then I'd have to like stop out above the side volume. I mean, that's like risking maybe 20, 25 points, right? So it's like, you know, it's not always, the bigger picture isn't always tradable as day traders, right? So that's why you have the lugs and obviously the volume, the SI volume, which is the most important factor of them all. All right, let's see if anything changed here with this ATR where my entry is going to be. Let's say seven. Seven times 0.75 is five and a quarter points. Uh, so I'll just move this up a quarter. That was, that was nice and cute to come down there and stop me out when I knew this was going to happen. That's great. Right, that's not a new event yet. Um, I look for 150 or more. So let's see if we get filled here in the ES. I'm a little bit leery of this long in ES, though. Like I said, I just showed you we're at the high volume note of that prior balance, and you can see I'm basically going to be getting long at a baby lug, which many times is resistance. But there's enough volume here that I think we can blow through both of these. And then that would turn out to be a failed breakdown of this balance, and we should rip. Right? There you go. All right, filled on that. Uh, so what I can do now, though, 
Just trail my stop, right? Here's a new event. 1500 stops. So the cell ice was probably part of that. How did that, how did that taste? Someone's not really happy right now that they shorted down there. Here's your stop run. What's great about this again, when you get a new event, you can trail your stop and, and or add. I'm not gonna add right here until we can build new lug. We build new lugs and I will be definitely adding. But you know, we're approaching this red lug right now, which I will probably get out of at least one if we struggle. Once again, here it is. 87. All right, so most importantly, five and a quarter is the three quarters in ATR. So I can now, this, the bottom of the zone is at 78. I can put my stop now at three quarters in ATR below this zone, right? Before it would have had to been below this zone. So now I'm only risking, I'm not risking much here at all <clears throat> if this is wrong. Um, so what did I say? 78, 73, 72, 75 is the stop. So that's not too bad of risk, considering how volatile these markets have been lately. All right, so you got new events coming in too, more sell ice. I guess they changed their mind, puked, and then said, hey, let's get back in. Again, you don't know what's happening. You come up with you know a thesis or theories of what's happening. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't, we get this all the time, like new guys that come on here and they don't understand this. And like, well, how do you know what they're doing? They could be hedging or they could be getting out of positions. It does not matter. There's someone on the other side. So the area is what's important. It doesn't, you're never gonna know what people are doing unless you're the almighty, right? So don't waste your time trying to figure it out. Know the area and know how it should probably react and then what it should do and what it, what it didn't do. And then you have yourself a tradable area, right? It doesn't matter what this is. Could be guys getting out, could be edging of options. It doesn't matter. There's someone on the other side. There are invested traders in this area, just like there are invested traders in this area. Right, and I guarantee you, some of the sellers in this area were part of this puke, right? That's why it was such a large puke, 1,500 contracts. So let's see if this can hold. <clears throat> let's see if we built new loads and soybeans because I want to add to this trade here. Yes, we did. So this is exactly what I wanted to see, right? Here's new lugs. Here's your yellow directional. Here's your prior red. We're above there. We're retesting the yellow. If this holds. We have a volume set up as well. I will add, and that's my objective, 1419. Here's your volume event that we just trailed our stop on. So I'm hoping this can get back down here. You know, I don't even need a... Well, it's at right at the yellow lug, so I'll wait. I'm usually conservative with the yellow lug, so here's your ATR, way more, double ATR. I'm looking for a retest failure. I'll get in at point and a half, three quarters of an ATR, and I'll, my ultimate goal is 14.14. And my stop will go in the same spot as this. So now what I'm going to do, though, I'm not going to, I will not short this area now. Why? Because it's been invalidated as a short area because we got a full ATR above here. So all I'll do is take longs or stop out. I won't turn around and short. If this would have held this zone and broke, then I would have gone short because we didn't violate the area by an ATR. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, a lot of talking, Bruce. Any questions right now? Uh, no, no, it's pretty uh, pretty quiet in the questions here. Oh, wow. yeah. Again, just, a, just an incredible educator. I am. Yeah, yeah. So this is not cool. I, again, knew this was going to happen. I knew this looked like it would get filled. I was hoping to get another opportunity. I got stepped out. All right, so this is now done. I'm canceling this short because we got an ATR above this zone, right? The top of the zone was 84. We got up in the zone that's almost 40 points away, so that's definitely invalidated. We get back to back stop runs here. You can see the swipes. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this because we've traveled, traveled an ATR above and below. And I'm going to make this, you can see, look at the swipes here. So this is significant, right? 400, 1,000, 400. That's basically part, all part of these two stop runs. So I'm going to actually draw this zone. 
I don't usually just draw, not yet, but I, I will eventually. I don't just draw zones on the swipes, snakes, as I call them, um, just on the SI indicator, but this is this is heavy enough. I mean, this is incorporating both the stop runs, so I'm fine with drawing the zone. Where's the top of this? So you want to incorporate all the prices. It's right there. There's your new zone. So let's check out the lugs. All right, here's your pullback in soybeans. Let's just check that out real quick because I want to. Now I can put this order in to add to this trade. It should be retesting the zone. Pretty close. Again, I, if it gets within two ticks, I consider that a retest. The top of the zone was two quarter. This got to two seventy five. So if this turns around and starts ripping. Just check the ATR real quick, make sure we're accurate. ATR is 2.47, so 2.5 times 0.75 is 1.875. So I'm just going to go two cents. So the top of the zone again is two and a quarter. I will add to this trade at four and a quarter. If I get filled, the stop's going to go in the same exact spot. Three quarters in ATR. Actually, let's make this two cents now. This is why you use ATR. It's dy dynamic, and you can shrink your stops stops or, or target or um, entries or expand them based on the current volatility, right? That's why we're using the ATR. So this is 96.75 now because the ATR has increased. <clears throat> so if I get filled, I'm going to put my stop in the same spot. So I'm either going to stop out of my long if this fails and comes back through here, or if I get filled, um, this, is not, this is the same place I'm going to stop out. Three quarters in ATR below the current volume setup. So I was watching, I forgot about this zone in Russell. I don't think it retested it though. I was watching this to get long. This is right at the open. Huge set by ice. We did not get back here though. And I was gonna be, I was not aggressive on the break of this zone. It looks like I should have been, but that, this happens, right? Sometimes you don't get the full retest. But the reason I was, I did not get in three quarters of an ATR on this zone is because we were below the yellow up, which I will show you. If we weren't, Russell, I just heard by alert at RT, 150 contracts. That was down here, right? So you can see. So if I was watching this, I probably would have, even though we didn't fully retest the zone, I would have seen we did get it. So what do you see here? So first of all, what happened down here? We couldn't tag the blue. That's telling you something's up. As soon as we get above this yellow, I mean, if I would have got it, so this was the event that I, I, I was going to go along this event because basically what happened here too. I was waiting for the retest, but if I would have seen this yellow, I would have, I wouldn't have waited for a full retest of the zone. I would have just jumped, probably jumped in and then put a stop below here if I was watching this. So you could see it retested the yellow. Russell and now we're going right there. Russell Lightspurt by alert at RT, 150 contracts. Let's check our, uh, all right, filled on soybeans, so now my stop's gonna go there. And now my objective is that red lug, which was, I think, 14. Russell, I just heard by alert at RT, 18. 150 contracts. So I'm, that's my target Russell, there. Russell, I just heard by alert at Goodness RT, gracious. 151 contracts. All right, still not out of the zone there. What's going on in the CS trade? All right, so I got to be careful Russell, here. Russell, I just heard by alert <clears> at goodness. RT. We'll go draw that Russell, down here in a second. Russell, I just heard by alert at RT. 150 All right, so you're saying there's some icebergs in Russell. <laughs> Look at this coming in here. Look at this. 600 icebergs. Threshold's 150. Four times normal, and it's still coming in. Buy icebergs. I think I said sell icebergs. It's buy icebergs. So I'll come down here. Top of that. Top of that. And just incorporate all the prices. This could still expand. We'll see. But as of right now, major, major, major area. So what should happen here? Well, like I said, based on the thesis, this should tag this. 
this should hold this ice that just came in and we should get up to here if this turns bearish something is wrong we didn't tag this you get a bearish event we're coming down here and then probably there and i will play to the short side i will play long aggressively out of here three quarters in atr i will play short but i need to see full atr retest fail right i'm being conservative on the short side aggressive on the long side because of where we are with the lugs atr is 47 ticks 47 times 0.75 is 3525 so I'll just say 36 36 ticks top of the zone is 58 94 as well enter this trade and if i get filled first objective is 2105 main objective we'll see how it responds up there again that's not a huge it's i'm risking more than i'm potentially getting if it bounces off the red lug but we doesn't mean we can't bust through those lugs either so we'll see this is a major volume event right either way this breaks you're gonna get a big move because of this again it doesn't matter why whoever did this did it put in this huge bias all these sellers are like oh crap wait a minute this is not working out and then you get to puke or the sellers are right and you can bet on there'll be some puking from the paper or whoever whoever tried to sell in that area all right so we want to again monitor this trade here closely because we're real close to the red lug 87 so if this struggles at 87 i'll get out of a couple of these You can see up here is spot gamma level two, and this is a very important 4600 is important if you guys read the spot gamma. I'll try to look at that here in a second. All right, so the new event in NASDAQ, I'm waiting to see. Again, this sucks because I knew we were going to do this because of, we're still going higher. But we had to have one little blip down to stop me out. Um, so this lug is at. 60 actually i don't need to do that it's on the side there 60. so what i'll do here 32 32.32 32 is the atr times 0.75 24 points so 24 points above here it's actually 24 and a quarter points i will go long so 11 34, 34 quarter. Not loving that entry considering the lugs up here, but we do have, I still think we're going straight here. So we'll see. We'll get there by the end of the day. It may not be straight there, but so now, but if this zone fails, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do? Well, it shouldn't fail. If the objective is the red lug, it should get to the red lug now. If it doesn't, then I'm looking, I will go, we go full ATR, so 32 points. Retest fail. I'll get in at three quarters in ATR and I'll go short. So again, it's all about what shouldn't happen, what shouldn't happen with the lugs. And then the same thing with the, you shouldn't see a bearish event here if we're getting to the red lug, right? So that's in. Not gotten filled in bad. And so we had. Yeah, I put this on it automatically. All right, so that's that trade. It stops at 96 quarter. So just wait now. I want to see what this does at 87, right around this. So the lug in the lug is right around this area. So we struggle. I'm gonna get out of two, and I'll see what happens if we build new lugs. <clears throat> so we've got two orders resting here to get long Russell and NQ. NQ still in the zone. Crude. 
Oh, look at that, we're rallying. What do you know? Gas prices are going to be 10 bucks. What was this? I'm sure I missed a trade. Yep. I'm going to delete these other zones because the number came out and we trade on ATR above and below. So this was the, you can see the snakes, it swipes, sweeps. This was this event right here, 176. So let's see what, what I would have done. Potentially still get in, but we'll see. Let's see that started. This is actually a pretty tight zone. Starting right there. Okay, you can see the tick strike. We want to see them start buying the crap out of these uh, stocks, and then we'll get to that red lug for ES. All right, so I'm almost positive I would have been aggressive here out of this zone, so I missed the boat. Lug-wise, actually, this is probably new lugs here. Not sure why you're not seeing. Yeah, there's yellow right there, 86.23. So I would not have been aggressive here because we're right at the yellow lug. So what I will do if this re we got here, that's that stop run. If we retest, go, I'll go long. So there you go. That's definitely, I'm sure that's an ATR. Above there, 16.4, so say 17 ticks, that's definitely 17 ticks out of there. It's over over 20, it was about 24 ticks out. Now if I get a retest, failure, three quarters of an ATR, I'm going long. And my objective, my target will be the next red luck. It's all the way up here, 87.09. Just want to make sure I don't miss this retest fail. Means is ripping, are ripping. So what did I say that objective was? Uh, 18, I think. You guys would be amazed at how how magical these Ludwig levels are. Like it's just like this. What I would, if you can watch the webinar from yesterday, I posted in the room. It's like I felt uneasy about the trade. I'm like, oh, you know, he just was selling off. I'm like, well, here we go. I'm like, but my objective should get to the blue. And it just literally didn't even, I mean, it just kind of sat there and then just kept drifting down right to the blue. So again, I don't need, well, you got baby lug here too. But I might take, let's see. You get these baby lugs. We didn't quite touch it. But if we get up there and we, we stall, I'll get out of probably one. Um but my main objective is the red lug. You put on the trade and you wait for your, your targets unless you see another real-time volume event and then you have to change your tune. But in, if nothing comes in, I'm holding this trade at least till there. Maybe more. If it rips right through and builds new lugs, then I'll hold in the next set of lugs. <clears throat> Let me get out, get out of third here if it struggles at baby lug. It's about 975. get out of one and then and then we'll let four right baby lugs are not as strong but you still want to respect them all right waiting for a retest of this zone and crew to go long have resting orders here i'm about to get filled in russell we call it russell in the room because i mislabeled it one time and the computer kept reading off russell so we call it russell and then i'll get long nasdaq up there and I'm still long ES. That's the red lug. You got spot gamma. This comes back below this right here. I'm going to get out of two of them, right? Because trust me, if we if we come up here and build new lugs, you're going to get another volume event, and I can get right back in long. I don't need to you know, see where we're at. These are very strong. So what happens if uh, I get a bearish signal right now? I will get in aggressively because that's how powerful these things are as support and resistance. But if this rips right through it and builds a new lug, you're gonna get another volume of that and then you can get back in. I can get back in full size and, and then some. Still no questions, Bruce? No. We're gonna talk for straight for 
like the questions because I can stop talking for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like uh, maybe a couple people are typing here. Um, uh, yeah, uh, someone's asking about what maybe exactly are baby lugs. <laughs> so they're just, again, whatever her inputs are, I, t I was talking about yesterday, I actually was on the, that's on the webinar too. I said a higher power is spoken or because whatever her inputs are for these lugs, again, it's proprietary. They're, they are, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like literally like magic, right? Um, but baby lug, like this would be a baby lug. These are minor lugs here. So if you look on here, if you go to the actual studies, tool or analysis, analysis studies over here. So these are all, it's like you have your directional, that's the yellow. This is your blue lug, red lug, and then you have minor lugs. So I call them, I call them baby lugs, right? And then you can see it's like, it's these or these. Sometimes they're, they're on top of the major lug. That's why you don't see them in every, on every chart because they're just, and the more lugs you have in one area, the bigger, you know, resistance or support, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys, they are not only as targets, but just understanding what should happen, right? As soon as we build new lugs here, this should hold you should get to the next log. Exactly what happened. Doesn't mean it always happens. What if a negative event comes in? And that's what I'm saying. Well, that's there's something wrong, and you're ready to go short then. The more, the better you can get at reading these and understand what should happen. And then you get your volume event, which is in you know the SI indicator, which is by far the most important. That was nice of them to stop me out to the exact tick, by the way, which is by far the most important. Then you have yourself well, probably the most incredible edge I've ever seen in trading. So. You know, my my issue was that webinar I posted last week. Again, if, if you guys want the webinar reposted in the room, let me know. I'll post it again. I was not using these in the proper context as far as, you know, um, what should happen, what shouldn't happen, that kind of analysis. I was just using them. I would get long off a of volume setup, which are powerful by themselves. As I proved in December, I traded for the room the entire month, just trading volume setups, not looking at anything else. And that was profitable, right? You, you know, when you get the, your volume setups, then, you know, I was just, I was just using these as, as targets, but there's a whole nother world of understanding what should happen, what shouldn't happen when you, you know, you build new lugs, the yellow, the yellow should hold and it should get to the red. Here's one here, here's one here, right? But if that doesn't happen, that's telling you, okay, something's up, right? So that's, that's what I wasn't incorporating in my trading and I changed it basically at the start of the year. And it's just, I've just been killing it now. You know, I was doing okay. I was doing well with just the, the setups. But now when you incorporate these, especially for targets and things like that, it's it's a whole other world. So watch the video. If you guys want me to post it again, let me know if there's enough requests, Bruce, and I'll post it again. Even though I can't find the chat in here for some reason. I see the advanced webinar, but I don't see the advanced webinar chat for some reason, which is really strange. No, it's just uh, two, two up from it. You'll see, in fact, we'll get rid of the basics one. Um, well, I don't, here, I'll show you. I'll show you what I see. This is what I see. Yeah, no, not, not, not in there. Not in there, what do you mean? No, you're streaming in that one. That's the voice channel. No, I understand, but I don't have the, you can't see the, usually you can see the text channel. You know what I'm saying? Do you, I don't see so, it. Here. So go, go, then scroll down. Maybe it's below it. No, sir. Huh. That is weird. And it happened, I think, when I when I muted this. That's, yeah. See, that's really strange. Oh. You mute it and it's gone. Okay. So there you go. Let's see if there's any. Uh... Again, if you guys want it, let me know, and I'll post it again. But it's posted. I posted it last week. All right. Um, <clears throat> so we're just waiting to see if we build new lugs here, and waiting for another volume of that. We got that. We never got filled in Nasdaq yet. We got that. Russell, Russell, I am filled. So what am I doing here? Um, so now check our ATR. 
43.7, so just say 44, 44 times 0.75 is 33. So 33 ticks below the bottom of the zone is my stop out, so 25. Last two digits I'm talking. That's where I will stop out of this long. No, that's incorrect. <laughs> this is the bottom of the zone right here. I was looking at the top of the zone. Bottom of the zone is here. So 33 ticks is 80. So that's pretty large risk, but again, this is a major this is some major ice too. So that happened. Four times normal. This should hold. We should at least tag the red lock. If I get stopped out, fine. I take my loss, but now I'm it's go time on the short side, right? Because you should this should not turn into a bearish event. This should absolutely tag this this red lock. If it doesn't, and then we violate it and I get stopped out, well, a lot of, this is what I'm talking about, what should have happened and it didn't. We should have tagged this lug. Then you get a bearish event, that shouldn't happen. Now I'm going, I'll get stopped out, but then I'll be looking for a short and then these are my targets. All right, crude, waiting for a retest, I'm getting close. Now we'll go along this. Let's get this all 16.2 times 0 0.75, 12, 12, 15, 12.15, so 12 ticks. So if this comes down here, retest this zone, records an ATR is 12 ticks, I will get in at 25, and my stop will go. 12 ticks below this zone. Then I'll play for the new red lug. But I need to see a retest. All right, beans are ripping. Yeah, Scott, I found the uh, lugs webinar. Uh, it's above in the chat from, you know, you know last week. Uh, but uh, everybody, just click on the link there. You'll see. Uh, and that'll take you to it. Scroll up to it. Cool. Just remember to scroll back why. down to, to the current chat. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't get an alert on this, but this is a new event. Soybean ice for cells, yes. There you go. 212 contracts. Got added to this Soybeans trade. Soybeans top stock by yes. There you go. 905 contracts. There you go. I wonder if this is at the red lug. Well, look at that. Shocking. I'm out of three here. And now we have a new volume event too. I'll go back to lugs here in a second. I want to get this drawn. Look at this huge stop run here. So this should not, this should hold. Hopefully you build new lugs and I'll get back in, right? One second. Get this. All right. Um, so here's your stop run. Look at the stop. This is this That's monstrous. an amazing stop run there. Huge. Yeah. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Thousands. So there, I mean, guys, I mean, this happens in every market all day long, right? So we'll go over this here in a second. Let me get this drawn so I can trail my stop. Check out the lugs. But it's like, do you see, like, there was no sweat, no... Soybean ice for cells, yes. 206 contracts. I got my volume of that. I knew what my target was. Sit in the trade, right? So I got out of two right here, or half of them here, right, right at the red lug. So now let's see what happens here. Worst case scenarios, I trail my stop up. Let's just get this out of here so it's not confusing people. Actually, I just drew that, but we have a new event, so it doesn't matter. You always default to the newest event. So now the bottom of the zone is 12. 12. ATR is spiking, obviously, 3.75. So 3.75 times 0.75. 2.81, so we'll just say three cents. So three cents below here, I will stop out of the remainder, or I will add to this trade. If So we're probably gonna build new lugs and this will be the yellow lug right around here. So I'll wait for a re, uh, full ATR retest value. Aggressive right here because it'll be the new lug. Let's see if we have them. Getting up to the lug in the, in Russell. I'm not filled in NASDAQ yet. Um, so beans. This has got to be new lugs. Let's refresh this. Nothing yet. That's interesting. 
there, any minute now, this thing's going to build new lugs, and then we'll be able to play this new setup. Or 22. Um, so again, what happened? Came up here, built new lugs. What should happen? We should hold the yellow, and we should move to the red. Do I just jump in long there? No, I need a volume event. Do we get a volume event? Sure did. I got long on the volume event. And I would, I think I get, what did I get out of one or two here? And that was baby luck. And I, this was my ultimate objective. Now we're here. Like there was no sweat. I wasn't questioning as I got up there looking at my PL, like, oh my God, it, I got 10 cents in this trade. Should I get out? I guarantee some of you did that. That got in this long with me. I guarantee some people got out of here just because they got 10 cents and they don't want to lose it, right? Just let it work unless you see an opposing volume event and or an important lug. I cannot believe this is not building on lugs yet. I wanted to so I can go long off this new setup. This, this stop run, this is the ultimate stop and hold, or it could be, right? Look at the stop run. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really um, uh, curious on that. I would love to see the delta between what are stops and what are not uh, in there. Uh, because like, uh, it's making sense that you know oil's going up inflation everything's going up like soybeans should also be going up and like this will be people getting stopped out but also new, new traders coming in right right and you know the fundamental ideas and the bigger picture is always great but that doesn't really help you as a day trader either right it's like yeah they should go up doesn't mean they're going to go up right now right so it's like that's where that's why like uh, economists and these you know these longer term guys are terrible traders because they can call a, a larger term move, but it's like it, they can't trade intraday to, to find the best places to get long type of thing, right? So that's, yeah, that's where true. the book map volume and the lugs, that's all you need. This is, I cannot believe. So this, this is, if we do not, so she talks about this on the webinar. If this does not draw a new lug and we get back below here, Something was wrong where it didn't have enough of the inputs to draw new lugs. So that should tell you this is going to fail, right? And then I will potentially go short. <clears throat> but in the meantime, we'll just hold this. All right, filled on NASDAQ. NASDAQ is giving me the finger the last two days. So usually it's the ES giving me the finger and I kill NASDAQ and then I've already been stopped out once today. So more importantly, let's get our stop in here. Um, of course, I lost the chart. Hold on a second. Here we go. 29.38. <clears throat> so just we'll say 30. So what's this? Three quarters is 20, right? 22 and a half. So 22 and a half points below this zone. I'll stop out. That's 67.50, 65.50. We're going to stop out of this long. Let's see if we tag the red lug in. Oh my God, I missed this trade. See this? <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. How about someone helping? I yell at my room all the time here. This is what we were waiting for in crude. Here's your ATR. Here's your retest. Gone. This, this is a 60 tick trade already, 50 tick trade. And, and I completely missed it because I was adjusting stuff and so I mean that's not cool. I, I can't yell at this room as much because a lot of guys don't know what they're looking at, but my room, there's no excuse of anybody ever that's the whole purpose of my room is the guys be sharing setups. Hey, new lugs in, in ES. Hey, there's sell ice and NQ. There's huge stop runs and soybeans. That's the whole goal of that room. And a lot of guys are just secret squirrels sitting there not saying anything. And again yesterday or I think it was the day before I missed two huge trades, one in soybeans, one in crude, because I was doing what I'm doing here. I was on one screen on my webinar, and no one pointed it out. It's like that's the whole purpose of the room. So I'm not going to give you guys a verbal lashing because a lot of you guys are just learning this stuff now, but the room, there's no excuse for the guys that have been there for almost a year. All right, so on that, what am I looking for? I'm still on ES. <clears throat> So let's see if we drew new looks here. Actually, we did, right? Getting confused now with everything. I did. There's new lugs right there, right? So what should happen now? This should hold prior red and yellow. If this gets below here and you get a bearish setup, something's wrong. If you get a bullish setup, we should go to here. If 
you get a bear set up. I don't know why this changed colors, by the way. We get a bear set up, and I'm playing for that lug of what should happen, right? Yep, yep. I mean, uh, the simplicity on this, uh, uh, Scott, is, is brilliant. I mean, uh, you're just looking at your levels, your higher time frame levels, and then order flow events around them. As simple as That's that. It. The simpler you can make your trading, the better you're going to do. How many people on this webinar charts look like this? 4,000 lines on your chart. And then you wonder why you can't make money, right? It's like, well, I want to get long here, but this is this is the 400-day moving average. Well, I want to get long here. I want to get short here, but we're, we're still, or I want to get long, but we're still below the 40-day the moving average. And um, my my R RSI is showing me this, and my MACD is showing. Just get rid of all your crap. You don't need anything besides real time volume in these, in my opinion. You don't even. Need, I mean, if you don't want lugs, don't get lugs. You're doing yourself a disservice. But you can still trade on, you know, on structure and stuff like that. This is all we've done for the last, you know, over a year. In the room when I wasn't using lugs in the right context was we were basing our trades off of the bigger picture. You still want it. You still can trade off the bigger picture. You still should, right? But the lugs just help you day trade a little better. But this is about to become a failed breakout. And we're probably coming back to this stuff here. But if this holds, then you look like that. But you got to, you know, that's simple. You, I don't have, I'm not looking at 25 things. I'm looking at real-time volume, the lugs, and the bigger picture. You know, and I'll pay attention to VWAP and it's, it's standard deviation. But so many times, here's VWAP. This is this is what they call the daily value area. That's one standard deviation. This is one and a half. This is two, right? So many times these standard deviations will line up. This is how I was trading lugs before. And this is about a 90% trade. When you get to the lug at an extreme standard deviation of VWAP and you get your volume event, you can nine times out of 10, we're doing that. So that's how I was trading before, which is again, an incredible edge. If you want to sit around and just wait for that one scenario, you'll, you'll make money. Right, but I, I wasn't using the lugs in the way I'm using them now. And again, it's just it's just incredible. I can't stay in enough times. Um, <clears throat> all right, what's going on now? One, I want to make sure I don't miss this lug in Russell. I think a a point um, is is kind of important to make here because there was some feedback in one of the webinars uh, the other day about like well. You, you know, your your um, your uh, the the not not you personally. It was actually on uh, me uh, that that in the advanced webinars, like I'm I'm going through and um, as the event is is starting to unfold, uh, then I'm calling it uh, instead of calling it in advance, like saying, "Oh, this is gonna unfold." Well, I I don't know. I mean, it, it's like, okay, I'm looking, though, for the scenario, just like you are in here. It's like, what is the event that unfolded, and now, now what's the order flow around that event? And then I will go short or I will go long based on that, uh, what I read there. Uh, that's the higher right. higher probability. Uh, I just, uh, I'm trying to help. I, I'm not trying to uh, chastise anybody or, uh, 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 you know, um, well, you should be. If someone's telling you, you should know exactly what's going to happen. Well, first of all, you wouldn't be on this webinar. You'd be on a, um, a, a island sipping mai tais, right? You trade for for an hour in the morning because you know exactly what's going to happen. And then you go to the beach, right, right? Right. So no one knows what's going to happen. You use these volume events and important areas to come up with a thesis, and then you trade it. So whoever, I would give them a complete verbal lashing. So if you're on here, email me and I'll give you a verbal lashing. That's <laughs> if you, right? if, yeah, that would be, uh, yeah, sadistic. But uh, um, uh, <laughs> no, I mean it's really important though. Like uh, it's like a candlestick pattern unfolds. Let's just let's take a simple candlestick pattern. It's starting to unfold. It, it tells you to you know go short. Look at the order flow though. Does the order flow tell you to go short? If so, now you've got something that's higher probability that that event right. is going to unfold. If it, there's many times, and there's many times that the order flow around that event of that candlestick pattern, um, it it's it's not very high probability, or, or it's like no, that's not telling me that you know to go short. It's actually saying it's consolidating. And gonna get, I want to go long here, um, and and that's that's the read. 
uh, off of that. Right, and that's the same principle, right? So you see a candlestick pattern that's short. I don't believe in candlestick patterns, but if some people do, right? And you say, well, this is a short candlestick pattern. But it's then you said, hey, that doesn't break and it's consolidating. Well, it's not doing something it should do. Exactly. So that's a signal right there. I should be looking for longs. Then you get your volume event. Again, the most important, powerful thing you could possibly have is the SI indicator volume. You get that event that's long, you're like, it's go time. This should have happened. It's the same thing we're using with the lugs, right? This should happen. If it didn't happen, I'm looking to fire the other way. Right. As soon as I see my volume event. And, and that's the best you're ever going to do. That's the biggest edge you're ever going to have. Right. And you're going and, and you've outlined the two scenarios what or, you know, what you're looking for, at least two scenarios, uh, maybe three or four. But like you're looking for that something to happen and then like then you will make your decision. So anyway, uh, point so this, point made. Um, sorry, uh, and for the interruption there. This is a perfect example here, right? So we built new lugs. What did I just say? This should hold prior red, baby lug. I mean, we just threw the baby lug in because it's just it's right here. But overall, it should hold prior red and yellow. If it does not, this is telling me right now something's up. Like th if this gets below this baby lug that this that should not ha happen doesn't mean i'm just jumping in a short like bruce said like this is the candlestick example it should it should have done this it didn't i'm not going short right now the second i get a bearish volume event then i'm going short and then that's going to be my target so i wait i come up with my I, my thesis of what shouldn't happen what should happen that didn't happen we didn't hold this we're not holding that okay now i have to i have to change my mind change my thesis so now i'm saying this didn't happen that should not have happened this should have held and ripped higher if this was extremely bullish right here now we're back down here if i get my my negative event i am going short and that's my target and then when you look at the bigger picture well where are we why would we be stalling here well because we're basically at the high volume node of prior balance this is where you use your bigger picture stuff here too here's your balance here's the smack dab middle of this balance this is why we're struggling right here. So this could easily, this should do this. Again, if you're just looking at, you're not using love. You're like, oh, that should have been a failed breakdown. We should be doing this. Wait, why are we stalling here? Wait, why is a negative, I keep saying negative, why is a bearish event coming in when we should have done, wait, oh, oh. And then we're going to do that. And then you take your short off of that. I'm just giving you an example off this. What should happen, didn't. You flip your mindset, wait for your signal. It's That's trading. That's how you make money. It's not, this has to go up. I, I don't care. I, I'm just going to stay long. That's why traders lose money. You've got to be able to, to flip on a dime if something doesn't happen that you're expecting to happen. And this is, this is it right here. The second I get a bearish signal, I am in, and that's my target. First target. That's uh, 45, 60 and a half. You know, it's 20, 24 points away. <clears throat> All right. Uh, speaking of that, I'm Nasdaq is seriously giving me the finger today and yesterday, but not stopped out yet. I did get out of one Russell, Russell up here because that was near the red lug. Again, it wasn't a huge profit, but it is what it is. Like this tagged came real close to tagging this red lug, right? So that's why I got out of one. But it actually did not. And that in itself is telling you something. Watch the webinar. She talks about the non-tag. And this is really close. But now, if you get a bearish signal, you're like, hmm, we should have tagged this. We should have actually broke through her building lugs. That didn't happen. Well, I should at least be getting bullish setups for another test. Oh, wait, here's a bearish setup. I'm in. Target, target. Right? So I'll stop out of this short, which is fine. I'll take a little bit of a loss. But guess what? I'm going to be making it way. I'll be making it back on the flip side because this and on top of that, here's your volume event, right? OK, well, this is monster ice. This area should hold. If this gets below here, there's going to be some puking. So just this alone, you say this is what should happen. Oh, wait, that didn't happen. We went above and now we went right through here. Something's up. I'm looking for shorts, right? <clears throat> Any questions, thoughts, concerns? Nah, David just says that uh, he's also like uh, uh, using his lucky rabbit's foot. Um, as yeah, that a, works too. Indicator. 
I'm very superstitious too. I mean, again, I watched the webinar I posted yesterday. I was short. Let's, let's go. Let's look where I was short. Right here. I was short this, and I kept every time I would bring the book map over. I think it was right here. Every time I'd look at book map, we do one of these. So I was short. I think it was right here. I was short from here. And every time I bring book map over, we do that. We keep popping up. So then I'm like, I'm just going to stare at this screen instead. And then we sold up to the book. So I'm very superstitious too. I wouldn't look at the book map because this was this was helping it get to the to the blue. It's ridiculous, I know, but you know I'm superstitious. A lot of traders are superstitious. And then at the close yesterday, you can see like this is it's just over. I can bring up every single market that I watch, all twelve, whatever it is. There you go. Built new lugs. What should happen? We should hold the blue, hold the yellow, move here. That did not happen. Objective is red. Got there. Hey, built new loves. What should happen? We should hold prior red, current yellow. There you go. Again, I'm not saying there's a volume event. This was, actually, this might have been, I can't remember when this was. Anyway, there you go. There's baby lug, and I can guarantee you we got the blue lug, or red lug, I mean. Actually, this was today, sorry. We did get, I didn't get long over there, but I got long over here. So that's how you read it. Something's up as far as longs now. We should not be struggling here. I mean, this could still hold. But I'm not doing anything yet until I get a volume event. So that's the other thing too, right? There have been people that, the Ludwig levels have been around for about 12 years and she has a loyal following, obviously. But that, the lugs are not enough and she'll be the first to admit it. She's like, you don't trade them in a vacuum. So right here, if you're just trading lugs, you're like, I'm in, I'm in short. This should have held this, this should have held this. Well, this could still hold baby lug and rip back up, right? Because especially around the yellow lug, you can get choppiness. I'm not sure yet because I didn't get the most important thing, the volume event, right? So I don't touch this until I get a bearish volume event. That's where you put it all together. And that's the edge. You're not going to find a stronger edge in trading, period, ever, in my opinion. And again, I've been doing this for a little bit, a little bit of time. <clears throat> so let's take a look at these other ones to see where we're at. You know that. So this is this is telling, right? So once again, we already know ES is starting to look bearish. What happened here? Well, new lugs held where he should have. Prior red, new directional yellow held where it should have. Came up here, we should have tagged this. Still can. You always got to give the benefit of the doubt that we're still going to tag it. But my point is, if we now get a bearish event, I'm long this, right? If I get stopped out and I get a bearish event, I will be, I will make back my loss times two or three on a short down to here and down to here because of what didn't happen up here. You should not see a bearish event now. If you do, it's going to be go time to the downside. This is very, 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 very upsetting. I wanted to go along this and it is now going straight to that lug. I'll still take new, new setups, but I had the ultimate setup down here that we were waiting for right here. I would have been long three quarters in ATR, so probably right around 25. I think it was the ATR was 12. It's already a 50 point trade, 50 tick trade. Really, really upsetting. All right, I gotta get off here shortly. My, I gotta bring my daughter to school. She missed today early because I was on this webinar and my wife couldn't bring her. Just to check this. I hope she's attending the webinar and learning from you. <laughs> She's only 11, but I can bring her in, in here and teach her some of these concepts. Hey, that hey I mean, yeah. it's pretty, it's like you said, it's not easy, but it's simple. It's simple, exactly. Trading is not easy, but it's, if the simpler you can make it, the better you're going to do. Again, all, when I made millions of dollars, all I was doing was staring at this. I didn't even have charts up most of the time. I didn't know where we were on a chart. I was watching order flow. It doesn't get any simpler than that. You can't do that anymore, obviously, with the algos and the fake orders and everything else. But my point is, the simpler you can make it, the better you're going to do. So let's just check the lugs out here. We are waiting for this strong new lugs. If it does, uh, let's see. There it is, right? So what am I going to do here? Actually, I'm going to be conservative on my entry just because we're still bouncing around the yellow lugs. So say we came up here. 
and I got an above volume event, well, I would enter aggressively. But right here, I will wait for ATR move away, retest fail. Right? So. Here's your event, right? This is right at the L lug. I just get set down. Order and then I forgot about, of course. All right, so ATR in here is 3.81, which is pretty elevated for beans. 3.81 has a lot to do with that stopper, obviously, times 0.75. Actually, I take that back. So I'm waiting for a full ATR here out of this zone because we're at the yellow lug, right? I'm not being aggressive Gold right here. Gold stocks TC, 165 contracts. Every time I try to get off these webinars, something happens like that. Um, so I'm looking for basically four points out of here. So 26.50, waiting for a retest, three quarters of an ATR, which would be 2.85, so three cents. I will go long off of this setup. I'm being conservative on this entry because we're right at the yellow lug. So say we rip up here and then I get a bullish signal, well, we're above the yellow lug and then I'll enter aggressively. Right? So I will add to this trade. I still have three on, here's my stop. It's three quarters of an ATR below here, right? And I will add to this trade and just keep riding it up to the new lugs, new red lug. So this is what we call potentially, this is either gonna become a dumb and dumber the money puke, no follow through, no big money follow through, and it fails. Or it's a stop and hold. Stop run, that holds, the big money comes in behind it and continues pushing it higher. And I think that's what's gonna happen because you see what's up there. Yeah. And that's probably exactly where we're going. Let's check out these new lugs. So you see how you start to put things together? You're like, okay, I know that. I know that liquidity is up there. Oh, look what else is up there. Oh, red lug. So if this starts rolling, this is my next objective. Exactly. Liquidity at your levels. I mean, it, it's right. it's just so simple. Um, <laughs> so easy. Yeah, it's so easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so whenever, just let me know when you're um, uh, ready. I have it. I I have an announcement uh, for for the room in here. Uh, just want want to remind me before we uh, leave. Uh, that is all I'm trying to say. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to mark up this. We'll take a quick look at the logs. I'm going to hop off. i got to get out of here. There. <clears throat> this was a 188 stop running gold. Here's your volume of that. Now we go to lugs and base. Come up with a thesis on what's going on there and then figure out if we're going long, short, aggressive, or not aggressive. Hey, look at that. Wow, that red lug held perfectly. Isn't that surprising? Really, really surprising. Now we're down here, we're right at the lug. So I'm not gonna be aggressive on, so well, I guess we're below here. You could be, yeah, I, I will be aggressive. If we were like right here at the lug, but we are down here and this is where that stop run went to. So I will short this aggressively and this is gonna be my objective, this baby lug and then uh, the blue lug down here. So here's your volume of that. I know I wanna be aggressive because we're below the yellow lug right now. So where I will, I'll go long this too, but going long, because we are still below the yellow lug a little bit, I will have to wait for a full ATR retest fail, and then I'll go long this, three quarters of an ATR. So again, ATR is 19. So 19 times 0.75 is four, 14 and a quarter. So I'll just say 15 points. So if this, so I need to see, to go long, because we're below the yellow lug, I need to see 19 points. I need to see a retest then 15 points, I will be long. My stop will go three quarters in ATR below here. If this holds and breaks below here, I will just short three quarters in ATR aggressively, so 15 points below here, because we're below the yellow lug, right? If I keep saying points, ticks. So 72, so 77 will be my entry. 15 ticks below there. Otherwise, I'll wait, because what should happen, this should this is below the yellow lug. This should head down to the blue. If we don't, we get back above here, we'll probably come back to the red again. All right. Any other questions before I hop off here? <clears throat> uh, no, 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 no more questions. Um, uh, thanks, Scott. I mean, uh, it, it's, um, I just love the simplicity here. 
you know, you got your 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 higher time frame levels and your order flow events around those levels. That's it. Uh, and uh, go through your scenarios of what you're looking for. Uh, and uh, if it does that, then you're looking for going this direction. And it's simple. It's not easy. Trading's not easy. There's going to be times where you're questioning areas, blah, blah, blah. But that's where Bookman comes in. These volume events, are, we talk about it all the time. This is not subjective. This is not an art. This happened. This was a thousand lot, 900 lot buy stops. There's no questioning what happened here. It's how you trade it is, is the art, right? But if you know what should be going on with the Ludwig levels, then, then it just makes it a lot easier where you should, you should be expecting certain things to happen off of this volume event. And that's how I trade. Yeah. All right, guys. So hopefully you learned something today. Um, yeah. I do this every day in my room as well, twice a day. So so let, let me, uh, let me bump, jump in for just a minute here uh, before, before you hop off. I'll give you the last word. But uh, I just want to mm -hmm. let everyone know where we're starting. Uh, Tom B. will start streaming live uh, in Discord here. Uh, so uh, uh, look for it. it it's going to be in a new voice channel and also text uh, channel room. Uh, j just like we're doing here in, in advanced webinar, there's a, um, a, a voice channel and a text channel. Uh, it's going to be called Traders Lab, though, and uh, Tom Tom will be uh, uh, the trader in there running that. Okay, so uh, take a look for that. Um, we'll do it probably, I don't know, m maybe in just a half an hour or so. Uh, and uh, uh, it will be very, very different. It's not like a webinar like this. Uh, it's going to be kind of on and off all day long. All right, so uh, uh, you, you guys that are familiar with Tom B, the way he was doing it in the futures room, it's going to be the same thing. He's just going to be doing it uh, in his in this trader's lab room. All right, so uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's all. I uh, wanted to mention that here at the end of the webinar. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, and then as far as Ludwig levels, guys, if you go to, uh, if you want to try them out, she's got a three-day trial. Uh, go to lowbiglevels.com. There's a th the three free day trial. Put in the uh, text box that you saw it on this webinar. And I think she's got some kind of goodies or discounts or whatever. So just let her know you saw it on the webinar, and you should get something um, extra than the normal the normal customers. Uh, all right. Hopefully you guys learn. And I will so again. I do this twice a day in my room as well. It's on Discord. Head over there if you want to learn more, and otherwise uh, I'll see you guys next Thursday. Yeah, I'm sorry, Scott. I forgot to put this into the in the chat room. Um, I will put all of Scott's uh, information in here right now, uh, so you have that if you if you want to reach out uh, to Scott. Um, there you go. Uh, I just put it into the chat. Uh, you have it, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, take it take it from there. All right, great. Uh, hey, all guys, right, thanks. Thanks, Scott. See you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.